The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume 3, by Flavius Josephus. Book 13, Chapter 7 through 9. Chapter 7 How Simon Confederated Himself with Antiochus Pius, and Made War Against Trypho, and a little afterward, against Sendebius, the general of Antiochus's army, as also how Simon was murdered by his son-in-law Ptolemy, and that by treachery. Now a little while after Demetrius had been carried into captivity, Trypho his governor destroyed Antiochus, the son of Alexander, who was also called the God, and this when he had reigned four years, though he gave it out that he died under the hands of the surgeons. He then sent his friends, and those that were most intimate with him, to the soldiers, and promised that he would give them a great deal of money if they would make him king. He intimated to them that Demetrius was made a captive by the Parthians, and that Demetrius's brother Antiochus, if he came to be king, would do them a great deal of mischief, in way of revenge for their revolting from his brother. So the soldiers, in expectation of the wealth they should get by bestowing the kingdom on Trypho, made him their ruler. However, when Trypho had gained the management of affairs, he demonstrated his disposition to be wicked, for while he was a private person, he cultivated familiarity with the multitude, and pretended to great moderation, and so drew them on artfully to whatsoever he pleased. But when he had once taken the kingdom, he laid aside any further dissimulation, and was the true Trypho. Which behavior made his enemy superior to him, for the soldiery hated him, and revolted from him to Cleopatra, the wife of Demetrius, who was then shut up in Seleucia with her children. But as Antiochus, the brother of Demetrius, who was called Soter, was not admitted by any of the cities on account of Trypho, Cleopatra sent to him, and invited him to marry her, and to take the kingdom. The reasons why she made this invitation were these, that her friends persuaded her to do it, and that she was afraid for herself, in case some of the people of Seleucia should deliver up the city to Trypho. As Antiochus was now come to Seleucia, and his forces increased every day, he marched to fight Trypho, and having beaten him in battle, he ejected him out of the upper Syria into Phoenicia, and pursued him thither, and besieged him in Dora, which was a fortress hard to be taken, whither he had fled. He also sent ambassadors to Simon the Jewish high priest, about a league of friendship and mutual assistance, who readily accepted of the invitation, and sent to Antiochus great sums of money and provisions for those that besieged Dora, and thereby, and thereby supplied them very plentifully, so that for a little while he was looked upon as one of his most intimate friends. But still Trypho fled from Dora to Apamia, where he was taken during the siege and put to death, when he had reigned three years. However, Antiochus forgot the kind assistance that Simon had afforded him in his necessity, by reason of his covetous and wicked disposition, and committed an army of soldiers to his friend Sendevius, and sent him at once to ravage Judea, and to seize Simon. When Simon heard of Antiochus's breaking his league with him, although he were now in years, yet provoked with the unjust treatment he had met with from Antiochus, and taking a resolution brisker than his age could well bear, he went like a young man to act as general of his army. He also sent his sons before among the most hardy of his soldiers, and he himself marched on with his army another way, and laid many of his men in ambush and in ambushes in the narrow valleys between the mountains. Nor did he fail of success in any one of his attempts, but was too hard for his enemies in every one of them. So he led the rest of his life in peace, and did also make himself a league with the Romans. Now he was the ruler of the Jews in all eight years, but at a feast came to his end. It was caused by the treachery of his son-in-law Ptolemy, who caught also his wife and two of his sons, and kept them in bonds. He also sent some to kill John the third son, whose name was Hyrcanus. But the young man perceiving them coming, he avoided the danger he was in from them, and made haste into the city Jerusalem, as relying on the good will of the multitude, because of the benefits they had received from his father, and because of the hatred the same multitude bare to Ptolemy. So that when Ptolemy was endeavoring to enter the city by another gate, they drove him away, as having already a
Chapter 8. Hyrcanus receives the high priesthood, and ejects Ptolemy out of the country. Antiochus makes war against Hyrcanus, and afterwards makes a league with him. So Ptolemy retired to one of the fortresses that was above Jericho, which was called Dagon. But Hyrcanus, having taken the high priesthood that had been his father's before, and in the first place propitiated God by sacrifices, he then made an expedition against Ptolemy. And when he had made his attacks upon the place, in other points he was too hard for him, but was rendered weaker than he, by the commiseration he had for his mother and brethren, and by that only. For Ptolemy brought them upon the wall, and tormented them in the sight of all, and threatened that he would throw them down headlong, unless Hyrcanus would leave off the siege. And as he thought that so far as he relaxed as to the siege and taking of the place, so much favor of the place, so much favor did he show to those that were dearest to him by preventing their misery, his zeal about it was cooled. However, his mother spread out her hands, and begged of him that he would not grow remiss on her account, but indulge his indignation so much the more, and that he would do his utmost to take the place quickly, in order to get their enemy under his power, and then to avenge upon him what he had done to those that were dearest to himself. For that death would be to her sweet, though with torment, if that enemy of theirs might but be brought to punishment for his wicked dealings to them. Now when his mother said so, he resolved to take the fortress immediately. But when he saw her beaten and torn to pieces, his courage failed him, and he could not but sympathize with what his mother suffered, and was thereby overcome. And as the siege was drawn out into length by this means, that year on which the Jews used to rest came on. For the Jews rest every seventh year, as they do every seventh day. So that Ptolemy being for this cause released from the war, he slew the brethren of Hyrcanus and his mother. And when he had done so, he fled to Zeno, who was called Cotillus, who was then the tyrant of the city Philadelphia. But Antiochus, being very uneasy at the miseries that Simon had brought upon him, he invaded Judea in the fourth years of his reign, and the first of the principality of Hyrcanus, in the hundred and sixty-second Olympiad. And when he had burnt the country, he shut up Hyrcanus in the city, which he encompassed round with seven encampments, but did just nothing at the first, because of the strength of the walls, and because of the valor of the besieged, although they were once in want of water, which yet they were delivered from by a large shower of rain, which fell at the setting of the Pallades. However, about the north part of the wall, where it happened the city was upon a level, was upon a level with the outward ground, the king raised a hundred towers of three stories high, and placed bodies of soldiers upon them. And as he made his attacks every day, he cut a double ditch, deep and broad, and confined the inhabitants within it as within a wall. But the besieged contrived to make frequent sallies out, and if the enemy were not anywhere near upon their guard, they fell upon them, and did them a great deal of mischief, and if they perceived them, they then retired into the city with ease. But because Hyrcanus discerned the inconvenience of so great a number of men in the city, while the provisions were the sooner spent by them, and yet, as is natural to suppose, those great numbers did nothing, he separated the useless part, and excluded them out of the city, and retained that part only which were in the flower of their age, and fit for war. However, Antiochus would not let those that were excluded go away, who therefore wandering about between the walls, and consumed famine, died miserably. But when the Feast of Tabernacles was at hand, those that were within commiserated their condition, and received them in again. And when Hyrcanus sent to Antiochus, and desired there might be a truce of seven days, because of the festival, he gave way to this piety towards God, and made that truce accordingly. And besides that, he sent in a magnificent sacrifice, bulls with their horns gilded, with all sorts of sweet spices, and with cups of gold and silver. So those that were at the gates received the sacrifices from those that brought them, and led them to the temple. Antiochus the meanwhile feasting his army, which was quite different conduct from Antiochus Epiphanes, who, when he had taken the city, offered swine upon the altar, and sprinkled the temple with the broth of their flesh, in order to violate the laws of the Jews, and the religion they derived from their forefathers. For which reason our nation made war with him, and with him. 
but for this antiochus all men called him antiochus the pious for the great zeal he had about religion accordingly hyrcanus took this moderation of his kindly and when he understood how religious he was towards the deity he sent an ambassage to him and desired that he would restore the settlements they received from their forefathers so he rejected the counsel of those that would have him utterly destroy the nation by reason of their way of living which was to others unsociable and did not regard what they said but being persuaded that all they did was out of a religious mind he answered the ambassadors that if the besieged would deliver up their arms and pay tribute for joppa and the other cities which bordered upon judea and admit a garrison of his on these terms he would make war against them no longer but the jews although they were content with the other conditions did not agree to admit the garrison because they could not associate the garrison because they could not associate with other people nor converse with them yet were they willing instead of the admission of the garrison to give him hostages and five hundred talents of silver of which they paid down three hundred and sent the hostages immediately which king antiochus accepted one of these hostages was hyrcanus's brother but still he broke down the fortifications that encompassed the city and upon these conditions antiochus broke up the siege and departed but hyrcanus opened the sepulchre of david who excelled all other kings in riches and took out of it three thousand talents he was also the first of the jews that relying on this wealth maintained foreign troops there was also a league of friendship and mutual assistance made up between them upon which hyrcanus admitted him into the city and furnished him with whatsoever his army wanted in great plenty and with great generosity and marched along with of which nicholas of damascus is a witness for us who in his history writes thus when antiochus had erected a trophy at the river lycus upon his conquest of indades the general of the parthians he stayed there two days it was at the desire of Lyrcanus the Jew, because it was such a festival derived to them from their forefathers, whereon the law of the Jews did not allow them to travel. And truly he did not speak falsely in saying so, for that festival, which we call Pentecost, did then fall out to be the next day to the Sabbath. Nor is it lawful for us to journey, either on the Sabbath day, or on a festival day, but when antiochus joined battle with arsaces the king of parthen he lost a great part of his army and was himself slain and his brother demetrius succeeded in the kingdom of syria by the permission of arsaces who freed him from his captivity at the same time who freed him from his captivity at the same time that antiochus attacked parthen as we have formerly related elsewhere chapter nine how after the death of antiochus Hyrcanus made an expedition against Syria, and made a league with the Romans, concerning the death of King Demetrius and Alexander. But when Hyrcanus heard of the death of Antiochus, he presently made an expedition against the cities of Syria, hoping to find them destitute of fighting men, and of such as were able to defend them. However, it was not till the sixth month he took Medaba, and that not without the greatest distress of his army after this he took samega and the neighboring places and besides these shechem and gerizim and the nation of the cuthians who dwelt at the temple which resembled that temple which was at jerusalem and which alexander permitted sanballat the general of his army to build for the sake of Menes, high priest as we have formerly related which temple was now deserted two hundred years after it was built Hyrcanus took also Dora and Marissa, cities of Idumea, and subdued all the Idumeans, and permitted them to stay in that country if they would circumcise their genitals, and make use of the laws of the Jews. And they were so desirous of living in the country of their forefathers, that they submitted to the use of circumcision, and of the rest of the Jewish ways of living. At which time, therefore, this befell them, that they were hereafter no other than Jews." But Hyrcanus the high priest was desirous to renew the league of friendship that they had with the Romans. Accordingly, he sent an ambassage to them, and when the Senate had received their epistle, they made a league of friendship with them, after the manner following. Phanius, the son of Marcus, the praetor, gathered the Senate together on the eighth day before the Ides of February, in the Senate house, February, 
in the senate house when lucius manlius the son of lucius of the mentine tribe and caius sempronius the son of caius of the falernian tribe were present the occasion was that the ambassadors sent by the people of the jews simon the son of dosithius and apollonius the son of alexander and diodorus the son of jason who were good and virtuous men had somewhat to propose about that league of friendship and mutual assistance which subsisted between them and the romans and about other public affairs who desired that joppa and the havens and gazara and the springs of jordan and the several other cities and countries of theirs which antiochus had taken from them in the war contrary to the decree of the senate might be restored to them and that it might not be lawful for the king's troops to pass through their country and the countries of those that were subject to them and that what attempts and that what attempts antiochus had made during that war without the decree of the senate might be made void and that they would send ambassadors who should take care that restitution be made them of what antiochus had taken from them and that they should make an estimate of the country that had been laid waste in the war and that they would grant them letters of protection to the kings and free people in order to their quiet return home it was therefore decreed as to these points to renew their league of friendship and mutual assistance with these good men and who were sent by a good and friendly people but as to the letters desired their answer was that the senate would consult about that matter when their own affairs would give them leave and that they would endeavor for the time to come that no like injury should be done to them and that their praetor fanius should give them money out of the public treasury to bear their expenses home and thus did fanius dismiss the jewish ambassadors and gave them money to those that were to conduct them and to take care that they should return home in safety and thus stood the affairs of hyrcanus the high priest but as for king demetrius who had a mind to make war against hyrcanus there was no opportunity nor room for it while both the syrians and the soldiers bore ill will to him because he was an ill man but when they had sent ambassadors to ptolemy who was called fiscon that he would send them one of the family at seloeus in order to take the kingdom and he had sent them alexander who was called zabina with an army and there had been a battle between them Demetrius was beaten in the fight, and fled to Cleopatra his wife, to Ptolemais. But his wife would not receive him. He went thence to Tyre, and was there caught. And when he had suffered much from his enemies before his death, he was slain by them. So Alexander took the kingdom, and made a league with Hyrcanus, who yet, when he Hyrcanus, who yet, when he afterward fought with Antiochus the son of Demetrius, who is called Grippus, was also beaten in the fight and slain. End of book thirteen, chapters seven through nine.